Welcome back, dear Python friends, to the Python Made Easy series. Today, we'll talk about methods and much more. We'll cover what prerequisites you'll need to make this class useful to you. We'll take a refresher on what a method is and how it's used. We'll talk about customizing method behavior and subclasses. We'll look at the Python introspection tools. We'll use Shell to store attributes in a database. And finally, we'll see four different ways to interface with a superclass. Let's not wait another second. To make the best use of this content in this module, you should already understand what's presented in Course 22, Intro to Object-Oriented Programming, and Course 23, Python Classes and Introduction. This course will build on those two classes. If you haven't yet taken those classes, go over to the Yogi Coder channel and view the Python Made Easy series playlist. As always, they're free. And now for a slight refresher on methods from our previous courseware. Methods are just function objects created by def statements nested in a class statement body. Methods provide behavior for instance objects to inherit. Methods work in exactly the same way as functions except that a method's first argument always receives the instance object self. Therefore, Python always automatically maps instance method calls to a class's method function. So if we call a method through our instance like this, my instance.method with arg1 and arg2 as our arguments, behind the scenes, Python receives it as follows. class.method, my instance, arg1, arg2. So Python determines the class by locating the method name. The self argument is very significant as it's the method's link back to the instance that is the subject of the call. Here we'll engage in augmenting methods by customizing behavior in subclasses. So let's talk about this slide layout because there's a lot going on. So the entire code is right here on the left hand side. Then I specifically extracted just sections of code that we will be talking about, namely the Perez method for the superclass here and the subclass down here. And then finally, I show the code output and what happens when we print it out. So here we augment the pay raise method from the superclass in our subclass boss. We do this because we want to use the majority of the logic and change it just a bit in our boss class. The boss gets an extra bonus that the regular employees don't get at raise time. So here, instead of recreating the logic from the pay raise method in the subclass, we simply call it and make our enhancements accordingly. This way, when we need to make modifications, we only need to do it in the superclass, only one time. So notice how we explicitly call the pay raise method for employee. We still need the self argument to link to the caller. We are actually adding the returned output to our new bonus amount in the boss class. That is the augmentation piece. Now we're going to look at some Python introspection tools. The Python introspection tools are special attributes and functions that give us under the hood access to an object's implementation. This will include things like which class an object is associated with, what is an object's superclass, and what are the attributes associated with an object. So if we look here at the first line, the instance dot dunder class attributes show which class an instance was created from. The name attribute will return the name of the class. So you see here when we print object Donnie is associated with the Donnie dot double under class double under dot double under name double under plus class, it prints right here, object Donnie is associated with the boss class. And then the next one, object Judy is associated with the, and we print her out and she's associated with the employee class. So, so far so good. The third line, object Donnie is associated with the Donnie dot class, and then we have this double under bases class. The bases sequence will return the object's super class. So you see the third line of printout, it says, even though Donnie was created under the boss class, the super class is employee, which is right. And then number three, we have the object dot underscore double underscore dick double underscore attribute returns a dictionary of attributes and values. So you see here a list of all of Judy's attributes, and then we turn it into a list, Judy dot double under dick double under dot keys, and we have 
first name, last name, months, and salary. And finally, the get adder method returns the value of the named attribute of an object. If it's not found, it will return the default value provided to the function. So here, when we do our for loop, and we have a counter here just to be able to provide how many there are or list them out that way. The key in Donny dot double under dick double under print Donny attribute name and some print formatting and we have count and then we have our key get adder Donny and key and you see it prints out these four lines here Donny attribute name number one first name with the value of Don last name with MAGA third attribute months and a value of 120 and finally the fourth salary with a value of 144,000. So some pretty neat things. I encourage you to take a look and examine these. So building on the previous slide, here we'll look at two different ways to get instance attributes only. So remove all the dunders from an object so we just see the attributes. So the first way we've seen on the previous slide, we have object Donnie, and then we use the dict method dot keys. Now the second way is to use a generator with a conditional statement we can exclude those attributes that start with the double underscore so that we are sure to see only the instance attributes. So we have a variable called adders no dunders equals list name for name in dir donny, because that's what we want to do, right? We use that dir method and we can see all the methods and attributes. If not name starts with, and then the double underscore. So name starts with if we didn't have the dots, it would only give us the double underscore. We use the not keyword and we get just the opposite, right? We get everything but those with the double underscores when we print it out and you see what happens here. That's in stark contrast. If we were just to use the dir method natively against object Donnie, we get everything. You see our attributes, our method attributes are down at the bottom. On this slide, we'll talk about storing objects in DBs. So how to make instant objects persistent or permanent is the topic. Using the Python shelve module allows us to store pickle and DBM objects on a file by key in a .db file. So we have a makedb.py file here. The first thing we do is import our two classes, employee and boss, the ones we've been working on throughout this presentation or the latter part, from our method stuff module. It's in the method stuff module that employee and boss live, those two classes live. So we do from method stuff import employee comma boss. Then we import the shelve module. Then we create three new objects against the two classes we have imported. So test is against employee. We give it its three attributes. Test two is against employee and we give it three different attributes. And test three is against the subclass boss and we give it three attributes. Then we create a DB object string using shelve and call it employee DB. This will store our data. Next here, we use a for loop to store my newly created objects using the fname attribute as the key to store them under. Then down here, we open the database again. We print out all records from the shell DB by their keys and sort them using the sorted method. So you see here, notice that the code output grabs the format from our string method from the employee class but it prepends the object name I created in the makedb.py file up here. So test, test2, and test3, respectively. And we'll finish up over these last two slides talking about class interface techniques. The objective here is to present all the different ways to interface with a superclass. So what do we have on the left-hand side? We have the first piece of code, and then on the right-hand side, we have all our print statements to prove out the code. So we have class soup with two methods, method one and a delegate method. Then we have an inheritor class, a replacer class, an extender class, and then a provider class. So we're going to deal with this delegate method that lives inside our superclass. The delegate method with the self.action statement is expecting the action method to be defined in a subclass. And it's done down here in our provider class. In terms of this delegate method, the subclass is what is known as an abstract class. That is a class that expects part of its behavior to be fulfilled by a subclass. So here on our print statement, we create an instance of provider, y equals provider, the provider class. Then we're able to call delegate from the soup superclass, and it prints out from the provider action method. 
You see that here, number three, we call print y.delegate, and number three over here, I am the provider action. That comes from the provider method, even though we are calling delegate, which points us, right? This expect, expects action up here to be created in a subclass, and that it is in the provider subclass down here. And here we pick up where we left off on the previous slide with the class interface techniques. So number one here is the inheritor class. The inheritor class having only a pass statement in its body inherits completely and entirely from the soup superclass. So if you see what we print out here, well, I create Z against inheritor first, and then I print Z.method1, and it prints out the print statement from this method right here, method number one. So number two here is the replacer class, and the replacer class entirely replaces the soup.method.1 with its own. So look here, I have a variable Q, which is an instance of the replacer class, and then I print Q.method1, and we print out I am the replacer.method1. And where is that from? That's from method one in the replacer class, so it entirely eclipses what's in the superclass. Then finally, we have what's known as the extender class, and we've seen this one before. It extends what's in the superclass. So let's look at that. I have a variable AA, which creates my instance of the extender subclass, and then I print AA.method1, and what does it print? First it prints, I am extending soup at start, extender.method1, then we call on its body soup.method1 self. So that's going to print out what's in the body of the superclass, and it does. This is soup.method1, and then it returns back and brings back my return statement. I am extending soup at end extender.1 method. Okay, Python people, thanks for watching till the end. If this has helped you, consider helping me to continue to bring you and others this level of content. Helping is so easy. First, subscribe to the Yogi Coder channel. Second, like this video and leave any comments or questions you feel moved to. And third, share this video on any and all social media channels with your friends and colleagues. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.